How clean and presentable can you make the crusty engine bay of an old Volvo look with just a few relatively cheap over-the-counter products to hear you ask? Well, I just so happen to have both to hand, so let's roll the intro and find out. So while the engine bay of this particular V40 wasn't actually that manky considering it's 17 years old, still doubted it had seen so much as an oily rag in years. So considering it had just bagged itself 12 months MOT with only a few advisories for consumables, thought I'd bag myself some over-the-counter consumables to treat the diesel heart of the 100 odd horsepower brick to a traditional clean and dress as I've never gone near the engine nor used this particular pairing of products before. I and while every man and his noise creating van had rocked up in typical sods law style as soon as I'd whipped the camera out, still thought you might be interested in seeing me get to grips with both, regardless of the background ambience. Now, something else you might be interested in getting to grips with, especially if, like me, you grew up with classic robot wars, is Mech Arena, a new real-time 5v5 mech-themed shooter designed from the ground up to promote friendly yet competitive mobile play. It's bright, smooth running, looks great on almost any device and boasts multiple fast-paced but fun game modes, including Control Point Clash in which two teams battle over territory and 5v5 Deathmatch where each player fights to take out as many mechs as possible. Speaking of mechs, there's loads to unlock, each with unique combat abilities to suit your preferred style of play, and a wealth of weapons means you're only a trigger finger away from obliterating the competition, whether that's face to face with a shotgun equipped mech or from safe distance sniper style, plus custom skins and paint jobs mean much like your motor, you can truly make them your own. Two slick new maps have just been released for you to explore, along with the first ever battle pass which boasts tons of special missions and rewards. And if that wasn't enough, there's always events taking place where you can bag additional cool prizes too. Mech Arena is completely free to play on both Android and iOS right now, and if you use my personal link or QR code you'll get 1 mil spec skin, 500 A coins and 70,000 credits to get you going. Plus, if you're quick, you might just be able to add me to your friends so we can shoot the shits together. Either way, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you, whether friend or foe, on the Mech Arena battlefield. Three, two, one. So while it isn't completely necessary, before I got going on the old V40 I did disconnect the battery as it was right there but uh, on a more modern tech driven motor where they're a bit more concealed and disconnecting them can cause more problems than it prevents wouldn't bother. And the same goes for the alternator which was shrouded over with a plastic bag here but on a less accessible completely covered engine wouldn't go to the trouble. So first up in terms of cleaning was a light half pressure pre-rinse with a wide 40 degree nozzle to knock back any loose dirt and dampen everything down so that the subsequently applied cleaner could be more effectively carried to the various 17 year old nooks and crannies.
Autoglim's engine and machine cleaner was then liberally applied to the main plastic engine cover and left to soak for a minute or so before being thoroughly agitated over with a chunky detailed brush to get a good feel for it before committing to spraying down the entire engine bay. But it firmed up nicely under the bristles and seemed to cut through the dirt with relative ease so rinsed it off to prevent it from drying before moving on to cleaning the other parts. Now, working on an old family beater like this grants you the freedom you don't have with other people's cars to be a bit more slapdash and really let your inner sponge jockey out, which to be fair is exactly what this old engine bay needed. And while the tools, products and general methodology remain pretty much the same for any engine bay, it makes sense to slow down and be a bit more sympathetic to the surfaces of a more expensive or high performance car to prevent inflicting damage. Once the more flat top facing parts had been thoroughly brushed over, a few easy detail items were employed to access the deeper and tighter parts of the Volvo's engine bay, which can easily be overlooked but need scrubbing too, so should ideally be worked over with a barrel brush or two once they've had time to soak. I did also tend to the underside edges of the bonnet, but the light made it difficult to film properly and with a big lump of sound deadening in the way, wasn't going to commit to anything too in depth, so just worked them over with an engine and machine cleaner primed brush before awkwardly rinsing them off prior to a final rinse of the underlying engine bay to ensure there was no residue and as little dirt left behind as possible, aiming for that healthy balance between providing an adequate level of clean while not unnecessarily driving water into sensitive old components. Once the engine bay was rinsed off, the bonnet was closed so that I could rinse the exterior to remove any overspray and while I'd always advise you properly wash a car after cleaning its engine bay, was potentially saving a heavy exterior clean of this crusty swede for another day, so just rinse the bulk of the residue away and tried not to give too much thought to the streaks and spots that would inevitably result. I then fired up Mr Mini Blaster to drive out any excess standing rinse water that wouldn't readily drain away or evaporate by itself, but didn't completely dry it off as the Auto Glim vinyl and rubber care that was to be subsequently applied works better and gives more of an all encompassing finish if it's applied to a wet or at least damp engine bay.
So the water-based product, which in my opinion is a perfect consistency for dressing over old damp engine bays like this, was then thoroughly sprayed over all areas of it. And I do mean thoroughly as I particularly enjoy this part of the process as it's what gives the biggest transformation overall, before being left to soak into the freshly cleaned nooks and crannies to do its thing while I naffed off for half an hour to grab a bite to eat, but not before quickly wiping away any cack-handed excess from the exterior with a damp towel. After the best part of an hour later then, the engine surfaces certainly looked a lot better but still needed a bit of a helping hand with a dressing prime towel to even things out, which was fine with me as I quite like buffing over the freshly dressed surfaces of an engine bay, but as I say it is important to properly let it soak in first to ensure you don't immediately remove everything you've just applied, so did just that until most of the excess had been mopped up and everything looked a bit more consistent. The edges of the bonnet were then quickly wiped over with a damp dressing free towel to finish up as although I wasn't too fussed about these awkward areas, didn't want them dripping water onto the freshly dressed engine beneath, so adequately dried them off before utilising one last fresh dry towel to work a light detail spray over the shiny part of the loose plastic cover as unsightly smears on the only decent looking part of the engine just wouldn't do. I then reconnected and secured the greasy battery terminal, primed the pumps and fired the damp shaky diesel up for a few minutes to dry off any excess water or product I might have missed before shutting it down and calling it a day. So because the idea of the video was to show that you don't need a bunch of expensive tools or fancy products to adequately spruce up your dirty engine bay, didn't want to overcomplicate things or go on for hours and potentially put people off the idea so intentionally kept it relatively short and sweet. Now there was no escape in the fact it was still very much a 17 year old engine bay with rusty, worn and broken bits lurking under the freshly applied dressing, but it now at least looked a few years younger. The Autoglim engine and machine cleaner did a great job of effortlessly cutting through the grime while the vinyl and rubber care which I probably used way too much of thoroughly enhanced the freshly cleaned surfaces, so would recommend the over the counter duo to anyone else wanting to perform a similar engine base spruce up, whether on an old beater like this or a more modern beast like the one lurking in the background. Now to preempt tedious comments about the environment I often seem to get, yes the dirt and chemical runoff will ultimately soak into the ground, but any kind of negative impact that will have on the ecosystem of a country where it rains every other day will be negligible, hence why England still remains a green and somewhat pleasant land. Overzealous environmentalism aside, cheers for tuning in, let me know if you'd like to see a heavy exterior scrub of this V40 next time, or if you'd prefer me to try and find something a bit less boxy to tickle your fancy instead.